Hello and welcome to part four of the reinforcement learning theory tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, would definitely go recommend you check them out. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump right into this. Today we are talking about the goal. The goal that we're looking for when we're doing reinforcement learning, specifically, again, this is a theory sort of series, so specifically in how can we describe it in math? What's our mathematical objective? If you remember, last time we talked about reward and returns, and well, this is reinforcement learning, right? It's it's all about reward. So let me, let me actually delete this so we can have some room to talk about this. It's all about reward though. Our goal is to maximize reward. We, we already know that, but the question is, well, how can we do that? What do we need to change that we're doing or what do we need to make so that we can maximize reward? So I wanna start out um, by going back to sort of what we went over last time, right? Uh, returns, returns denoted with a big R, and then we have a little trajectory. Uh, that's not the best how, but eh, that'll have to do. Um, so we were talking about returns, right? Which is the reward you get throughout an entire episode. And when we're looking at returns, what we really wanna maximize is not just one return, but the expected return over a certain policy, right? Um, so if we have, and remember a policy is denoted as usually this, uh, this pi symbol right here. This policy and this remember denotes uh, it essentially maps from a state to an action. It tells us what actions we should take in specific states. And you can imagine if we have a good policy, well, then we're going to get good returns. So essentially, or maybe I should leave that there. Oh, it's too late. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so essentially, what we want to do here is we want to maximize the expected return. So this is going to be our objective right here the uh, expected return over all the trajectories sampled from this policy. Uh, so what does this mean? We're going into some basic statistics here now. So if you're not familiar with this E, it essentially means expected. You can think of it as like an average over all of these different trajectories um, where each trajectory is you know, something that's been sampled from our, uh, what's it called? our policy. I don't know why I keep forgetting that. Um, but but that's it, it's essentially way a fancy way of writing for this policy, the average returns we can expect. This is specifically what we want to max. So we want to max, maybe I should say maximize this. Awesome. Let's get some more room right here. As we go, so sad to delete the title. Uh, I hope you guys like the the starting things I draw at the beginning of each of these. I always put a little bit of time into it, even though they're, they're I'm not the best artist, but you know, gotta put a little bit of effort in. Um, anyway, <laughs> back to this. So this is our goal: maximize this, right? Um, so specifically, as we're maximizing it, what are we changing? What's the variable? What do we have control over? And sort of as we were just talking about, that's the policy, right? So our mathematical objective here would actually be um, arg max of and i forgot to write this this whole thing right here um this expected value uh, we usually call this j of the policy equals the expected return so when you see j in these reinforcement learning papers and stuff they usually mean the expected reward for the specific policy um, so what we want to do is we want to argmax j over the uh policy right so and we're changing the policy this is what we want to do and this will yield us another policy which i'll put a little star next to denoting the optimal policy the policy that gives us the best average reward for this environment so just in case you're not familiar with argmax it's essentially just means we're maximizing this um but instead of taking the j as the result we say what what makes this j what makes this value at its max um, specifically what policy gives it its maximum value and then we return that uh, that policy which is now our optimal policy um, so this is fairly mathematically simple but you know expected return this is still a little bit abstract uh, you know it's still kind of hard to understand exactly what's going on here so what i want to do is take this j function and expand it so let me actually use a different color here. I haven't really been using different colors. I think that's probably a mistake on my part. That probably makes it a bit confusing. So let's color code this. So this is gonna be a blue J. 
that <laughs> no pun intended um so oh geez oh geez uh well that, that'll do that'll do right um so this blue jay i want to expand this and what we are going to expand it into is and i'm actually going to start on this uh i'm going to go all the way around all the way here so we'll expect a value if you've ever done statistics um, or, or, got, or if you remember statistics at least, you might remember that the expected value of something is equal to the integral, and this is for a continuous distribution, I guess, specifically, but in, uh, the integral, um, and we're gonna say over all trajectories, the probability of that trajectory, given the policy, and, you know, I'm going to rewrite this. I don't want it to be too small. I, I need to make a habit of writing these things a little bit bigger. Sorry about that. So J of policy equals the integral over the all trajectories. Um, so it's the probability of each trajectory occurring given that, that policy times the return we can expect it's a rough r uh, times the pro or the return we can expect from that trajectory. And let's segregate this off right here. Um, so what is this? This is essentially saying the expected return is equal to um, the ret each return times the probability of it happening, and we just sum those all up, right? Uh, makes sense, right? Or at least we sum them up in a discrete one. Okay, so. We got this, but the probability of a trajectory happening, well, how do we measure the probability of a trajectory happening, right? That's another valid question. Um, so let's expand that a bit too, and I'm gonna do this one in red. So, oop, this is the probability of some trajectory happening. So what's this? This is going to be, and this one, this one we're gonna need a bit of room. The probability of this trajectory given this policy equals, well, let's start from the very first state. Uh, if you remember back in our MDP days in the first uh, video in this series, um, we, want, we had this P0 function that tells us the possibility or the probability of getting every starting state. So the probability of our starting state S0 so, right, the probability we start out in this state, and then we're going to multiply that by every single, essentially, well, it's the probability that we take a certain action, right? So if we have three actions and we take action two, well, what's the probability we take action two? Um, and we can write that out. And I'm gonna leave a little room here um, as this, so the policy, we take action T, uh, given the state we're in, times, one more term, and I'm actually gonna run out of room here, so I'm gonna go down to the next line. Uh, so let me let me just put a bracket around this. Uh, so this is the policy that the essentially the chance, sorry, the probability we take action A, and then we also need to multiply that by the probability that action A in this current state gets us to the next state in the future, right? So the probability that we end up in state T plus one, given state T, and action T. And let's close our brackets. Um, so this is what we're doing for every single step, right? So we are going to multiply over from, from uh, T equals zero times step zero all the way to T minus one, the very end state. So this might be a little bit confusing. So I wanna go over this piece by piece. So what we're doing, right, is let's say we essentially have some trajectory. So let me go back to using white here. By the way, let me know in the comments if these colors are, are working better or if they're harder to read. I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but remember a trajectory is something like this. We have S0, then A1, then, or sorry, A0, then S1, then A1. Then we have S2, A2, and it goes on, right, until the end. Um, and each of these represent if the state we were in, the action we took, and the state we ended up in, and so on. So what we want to do is we want to figure out the probability of this entire sequence. So the probability of this entire sequence is the chance we started in this state, which we have right here, 
um, times the chance that we took this action, which we have right here, times the chance that we ended up in this state, which we have right here, and then we're restarting, right? Because we're now in the next sort of level. So, you know, this is the chance we got up to this state. Um, now it's going to be the chance we took this action, which again, we're summing over all time steps. So this is again done here, um, times the chance that we ended up in the state, which is again done here. And you can see this keeps repeating until we get to the end. And that's why we're uh, multiplying over all these, right? Um, it's the chance we got to here times the chance we got to this times the chance that this happened times the chance that this happened. And eventually if we keep multiplying all these out to the end, we'll get the chance that this exact trajectory happened. And that's what this, this P uh, the, this P of a trajectory given a policy is. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense where we are digging a little bit more into the math now. And, you know, we are digging a little bit more into the math and I guess you might have the question, what's sort of the point of this? Why do I need to know this? I think that's probably a, a common question when you're dealing with math. What's the importance of this? And this is actually very important because if you look at sort of these equations we've drawn, from this very first one, this j of pi, or this j of the policy, what you'll notice is we've expanded it so much that every single term left is either the policy, which is our variable, right? It's what we're changing. Or it's something from our starting MDP that we discussed in the first video, right? So if we actually look through this, right, we have action, that was in our MDP, states, those were in our MDP, um, P, this transition function, that was in our MDP. Uh, this P0, the chance of getting a certain starting state, that was in our MDP. Um, and then this reward up here, uh, this, or sorry, this return of a trajectory you'll see up here, you might be like, well, we didn't have this, right? Um, but that's, we, we didn't have this, but if you remember actually to the last video where we talked about reward, well, remember we do know what this is equal to. Um, the trajectory return is equal to, if we're doing discounted, which I'm assuming we're doing discounted at this point, that's what I'm going to assume from now on, uh, it is the summation of reward t uh, gamma, I'm doing this off script, by the way, that's why I'm happy to hard dive here. Um, so from, we're gonna say from t equals zero uh, to t uh, to t minus one, I think that's it. Hopefully that's right. <laughs> um, but what you can see here, right, is even this, this is reward in gamma, right? And gamma is a constant in reward was also in our MDP model. So what I kind of wanted to show you guys is now that we've come this far, we have essentially reduced this all the way down to what we started with. And the reason that is important is because as we sort of move on here, and actually start coding these out and talking about how we're going to implement them in algorithms, we can talk about everything in terms of these basic concepts. And we won't have to worry about things being like ambiguous or like, oh, if I was coding this, like, what would this be? Like, what does, you know, we don't want to have to think about what's P of a trajectory? What does that mean? Um, instead of having to think about that, we want to have a clear definition, which we now have here. Um, and then from that definition, it should make it a lot easier to code things out and understand what everything means and this is really the importance of this it's clarity it's having no ambiguity left um, and being able to express what you mean to the most exact degree possible that's why we do this and that's why it's so important we're actually going to keep going over stuff like this um, this is sort of we we've showed our go our sort of objective here right it's to get this optimal policy by changing the policy we currently have that's the objective. There's lots of different ways we can get to that. So as we go over in future tutorials, you'll see sort of what different, you know, methods we can use and what different mathematical formulations we can use. I hope you found this interesting. We're really getting into the juicy details now. Um, so I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do drop a like, subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And I hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks.